Good morning, friends. I greet you in this new calendar year in the precious name of the newborn Prince of Peace, the Christ, who has broken into our world again at a time when we need him more than ever. I greet you in that spirit this morning and in a different place. For this morning you are uh, worshiping with us at home. We are worshiping virtually for two weeks because we believe in protecting all God's people. We believe that the holiday spike and peak may be very, very real. We believe in protecting the medical community. We believe that it was the right decision to make. And so on this Sunday morning, or whenever it is that you decide to worship with us, we greet you in a spirit of God's wisdom that is a part of who we are as faithful people. I would ask you at this time, if you are not prepared to push pause on your worship service and set your table to be fed this morning, this afternoon, this evening, to join us and be fed by the one who is the bread of life. And so we do. With our tables now set, take a moment to breathe, inhale and exhale, and receive the love of God. Know that the Spirit is alive and at work in us, infusing us. Know that in this time set aside for God, for celebration and for gratitude to be sung. Know that in this time, forgiveness can happen. Love is realized. Grace is claimed. Know that we, as we gather and breathe and pray, and sing and hear the word of God proclaimed week in and week out, morning by morning, we are together in the community of God's people where we are stronger and wiser. Together, let us worship the Lord, our God. May you join me in the call to worship. Let us worship the God of new beginnings. The God of second, third, and fourth chances. The God of recreation. The God who makes us and all things new.
Hi friends, it's good to see you remotely. I'm glad that we get a chance to be together on this first Sunday here at worship. Wherever you are, I hope you're having a beautiful day. So, I don't know about you, but I get a little crabby after Christmas and after New Year. It seems like, I don't know, all this excitement's gone. And I always felt this way, even when I was really little. So my father, in order to cheer me up, would get me a huge pile of special magazines to look at. They're called seed catalogs. And he would save his seed catalogs that came in all of December so that after we took our Christmas tree down, I would have something to look forward to and we would sit for hours at the dining room table planning our gardens. And it may not sound that exciting, but you got to look at all the flowers and he let me cut them up and paste them in on his charts and figure out what we were gonna grow and how we were gonna have them and think about what was gonna appear in the early summer and what was gonna appear in the later summer. So I started doing that last night. I got out my seed catalogs and I even have some seeds ready and I'm thinking I love this particular seed because not only is this seed basil but it gives me a recipe for the pesto I can make so I'm already thinking about what I'm going to eat and as I was thinking about these seeds and where they were going my husband reminded me that the tree in front of the house got a lot bigger this year and that I might not have as much sun where I had sun last year. So even though I plan my garden every year, I have to think about what's different this year. And I think sometimes we have to think about that for all parts of our life. You're going to go back to school this week and it's going to be different than it was in September. You're going to be on, on your screens again, but it's still an opportunity to do something new, to plant a seed of something new and grow something that maybe didn't grow last year or that you didn't plant in the same place. And I'm thinking, I'm going to plant some seeds this year in my heart as well as in my garden, and maybe you can do it too. I'm gonna plant my seed of listening. Some of you might wanna plant a seed of sharing or kindness or, anybody have a seed idea? Hope. Hope, that's a great seed idea. And I'm gonna plant that seed now of listening. And every day I'm gonna to try to take care of it, to make it grow a little bit, to make it expand, maybe even, do some pruning of it and listen really closely so that I can be a better listener this year. My new beginning is going to be a little different than it was last year, just like my plants are going to be in a different place than they were last year. But they're all going to grow because I'm going to take care of them and I'm going to make sure that I pray over them and I know that I'm going to listen. Are you going to plant a seed for me this week? I hope you do. Think about what new thing you're going to grow in your heart. And I'm going to think about what I'm going to grow in my garden and in my heart and start taking care of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I will read the scripture from Isaiah 65 verse 17. For I am about to create new heavens and new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. Inspires word for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We have just a few announcements this week and one primary one, which is we're going to be online, but doesn't mean we're not gathering. Our um, 
Companions in Faith group will meet this Thursday online. They have a new book study. You can take a look at that. Uh, it's called Boundless um, Compassion. And I hope you'll join us if you're av available on Thursday morning uh, for a beginning. You don't have to read anything before you come. Similarly, next Sunday, our groups will meet online. Um, there's links in the e-blast for uh, the Zoom. So you can get on to the adult discussion, the uh, confirmation class will meet online, and Sunday School will gather online as well. So take a look for those Zoom links in your e-blast so that we can gather again, even virtually, and stay connected this week. Great, and thank you so much. And we will uh, continue to ask you to continue to support the gifts of Morrow. Uh, just when we began to pass an offering plate again, uh, we are now asking that you would remember to make your gifts online or send a check or write those checks for these two weeks and bring them in uh, a couple of Sundays from now, and we will always give thanks to God uh, for you and your dedication and your commitment. We will honor the fact that we are putting God at the head of our households, and we will give thanks for every gift that is given for the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ lived out, really, really, really lived out at Morrow Church. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We thank you for the opportunity to be in 2020, 2022. We thank you for being with us through 2021. Though we faced different situations, you helped us through. We thank you for your love and mercy that I knew every morning. We thank you for your protection and your guidance. We thank you for being with us through the holidays where we got to meet family and friends. We are grateful for this year. May we remember this year that you are with us and you are for us. May we remember that our strength comes from you and we cannot fight challenges on our own. We need you, God, and we need you every day. As we are in the new year, we pray for the healing of the world from the COVID-19 and the new variants which keep coming. We, keep, we pray for the healing and we pray for peace to roll in this world and your love to lead in this world. We pray for those who had the doors of the church closed before them because of the differences that we have and we pray that the doors may be open to everyone so that we can all pray to you with love and in spirit. May you mend all the broken families and the broken friendships. May you protect us from harm, and we also pray for children. May you be with them. There are some children who are abused in all forms in this world. May we be able to advocate for them. May we be able to stand for them, and may we be able to teach them to grow in love so that the, all the generations to come they keep knowing that it is the love that lead. May you heal all those who are sick and may you comfort all those families who lost their loved ones, their properties, and who lost their health. 
We believe in your God, that you are with us and in all the circumstances, in all the situations, sometimes they may be painful, but it does not mean that you have forsaken us. May we always remember that in everything that we face in this life. We love you, God, and we need you in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. from Isaiah 43, verse 17 to 19. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings our chariot and horse, army and warrior, they lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wing. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Inspired words for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Greetings again, my friends. How are you this morning? What's new? Que pasa? What's up? How you doing? And of course, for good measure this morning, let's ask ourselves again, what's new with you? To which we typically reply, well, not much. What's new with you? I think there are plenty of things that are new that we need to ponder, that we need to claim and celebrate together, share with one another. And throughout the scriptures, there are many things that are new throughout the text. God makes new covenants over and over again. A covenant to Abraham, a covenant to Noah, a covenant to David, and Jeremiah gives us that new covenant that no longer will we need to say anything because the love of God will be written on our hearts. Good news will be written on our hearts. New vineyards new fields, new mornings, and new dawn. Jesus speaks about new wine, fruit of the vine, and new wine skins. And the letters tell us that we are the new creation. There is much that's new today much that we can ponder. So what is new with you? What new thing is God doing for you? What new thing is God doing in us? 
Is there something you'd like to name this morning, this afternoon, before bedtime, that you would like God to do that's new for you? Ask God to do something new. COVID is not new. Variants are new. And online worship is not new. But our new technology and our new ways of knowing how to do this work is new. And something to celebrate that makes it easy for us to share our worship with our friends and family. The click of buttons to send a message that needs to be heard is new. The ability for us to bear witness to God's love in our lives has been made very simple. Perhaps that is the new thing that God wants to do with you and for you. I wonder about that and how we're doing with our sharing of the good news with each other. Racism, sexism, classism, homophobia is not new. The killing of innocent, unarmed black men is not new. The profiling of peoples is not new. But there are things that are new. Guilty verdicts are new. Holding police, uh, law enforcement peoples accountable for that profiling, for those killings, is new. And there is a language of white privilege that is not new, but what's new is that that language and understanding has been uh, more mainstream. You don't have to go to a special college to learn about these things. We're now talking about white privilege. We're now talking about white fragility. And this is a new thing that God is doing, wants to do with us and through us for the world. And I think that's very, very good news. But here's the thing, if and when I brought it up, right? Racism, sexism, classism, homophobia. When I bring up racism, there is a moment for people who say, oh Lord, here we go again. What, why are the politics being brought into the church and why do we have to continue to speak on these things? And that, if you had a moment, and we are all guilty of these moments, but these moments in us demonstrate perfectly and are our first clues to our own white fragility, the privilege that we have to decide whether or not we talk about these things, the uh, ability that we have to say that we've had enough when people continue to suffer white fragility, the denial of our own racism, the avoidance of the subjects, the eye roll or the upset, even our tears in those moments when we realize that we do have racist moments, racist bones in our bodies. And I believe that we are on the brink of something here at Morrow Church. We are having these conversations. We are willing to think about encounters that we've had in our own lives where we have said things and done things and, yes, have claimed the moments of us where our biases are exposed. 
most. White fragility is simply to say that yes, we know. And denying or laying our white privilege on the table says, I want to talk about this with you. I'm willing to share my story with you. Day in and day out, and not avoid those tough conversations. I believe that this is a new thing that God is doing and wants to do, and that we should be willing. We should not resist the harder conversations. We should live into our baptismal vows to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. We vow to do this at baptism and confirmation, and we vow to do it when we join a local congregation, and we as a congregation say those words as we vow to surround each other with just that. I will walk with you while together we resist these things. In community, in love, for the sake of the future, because we know and we believe that God is always doing a new thing. And as we lead ourselves into 2022, there is Another thing that is absolutely new. This year, we were able to receive vaccines. We were able to receive boosters. And that is new. A new thing done by God's people who research and study and understand mutations and who know what's needed in bodies to keep us as well as possible People are still dying, but far fewer. People are getting sick, but far less severe are their symptoms. Vaccines are something that's new. And I know for sure that there are people out there who really struggle with either being told what to do or who are fearful about vaccines for a lot of reasons. There are a lot of theories out there, but it is very, very possible that that is the new thing that God might want to do for you, for us, for all. I believe that God is sending us floaties and water wings to bear these stormy waters to keep us afloat and loving and supporting and keeping each other well. So I wonder this day as we encourage each other to be not afraid. Another repeated theme throughout the scriptures, like the new thing that God wants to do, be not afraid. For we take this journey together. We do the work together. We will support each other through these harder decisions and through these harder conversations because God is always wanting and doing a new thing, and we are God's people, vaxxed and masked, fragile but willing. What's new with you this day? Amen. As we gather on Sunday mornings and as we uh, gather the first Sunday of the month at Morrow and every week at 8.30, we are reminded that Jesus, when facing uh, his greatest fear, decided not to wait 
or resist what lied ahead, but instead decided that he would make dinner for his friends. Sat them round the table. They had been journeying together, and now they will break bread. He fed them all. He fed the ones who would deny and betray him. He fed them all. And so do we, in the life of the United Methodist Church, celebrate an open table. We celebrate the gift of God's love and grace that comes before any action we take. And so if grace leads you to the table this morning, know that God wants to feed you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people here on earth and all the company of heaven by our side, can you feel them? We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant, a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body that's been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant that's been poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen and Christ will come again and again and again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts and on the gifts of the tables set by your people. Make them be for us the body and the love of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his love. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we get to feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. There is one loaf. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing that we have blessed. And we, though many throughout the earth, we are one body in God's love. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman and man no more. And we, though many throughout the earth, we are one body in God's love. Receive the bread of life this morning and receive the cup that is the deep love of Jesus poured out for us. Let us pray. Gracious and most holy God, thank you for feeding us 
always, with the bread and the cup, and with the word, your word that is daily bread for us. Thank you for feeding us by granting us good friends for the journey, those who will pray with us, those who will hear our stories, those who will hear our deepest confessions. And Lord, remind us that as we pray for our debts to be forgiven, that we have vowed to forgive the debts of others, this day and every day, we give you all glory and honor and praise and say thank you and amen and join in our ending hymn. this morning to Nicole D'Angelo playing piano and Mickey McGrath singing solo. Jake Ezzo is on the cameras as always to Piwa Manianga, uh, Pastor Brenda wheeler Ehlers, and I am uh, Reverend Janice Lynn, Senior Pastor at Morrow Church. Hear now these words from the book of Revelation, a book that has been uh, debated for some times, uh, a book that was uh, considered and reconsidered before canonized because of the 
problems that could arise, but here are some of my favorite words of scripture, all part of this theme of the new thing that God will do. Hear them now as we prepare to go forth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And then I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, see, the home of God is here among mortals. God will dwell with them and they will be his people and God will be with them. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. Then the one seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Write this down. Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things and I will be their God and they will be my children. Inspired words for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so, God's children, go forth this day, wherever you are, wherever you are, and know that you are loved, a beloved child of God. Go out into the world and know that God is that love, the source with a capital S. Go out into the world and know the Christ who came into the world in flesh to relate to us, to show us the way and go out into the world empowered and inspired by all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Claim your gifts, push buttons and share good news. Go out in the name of the one who is creator and redeemer and the one who will sustain us for all time. Amen.